thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, my name is Charlie de Monet. I'm uh, from the Institut Langevin, and I'm going to show some results about uh, special temporal data filtering of ultrafast ultrasound data, and it's uh, showing its implication for uh, in terms of sensitivity and robustness against target time. Maybe just to give a bit of context, uh, one of our motivation in our group is to do functional imaging with ultrasound. Um, but conventional Doppler imaging is not sensitive enough to reach uh, such application because we want to see really small vessels to be able to detect cerebral activity. But quite recently in our group, we showed that using a modality called ultrafast Doppler, we could reach the sensitivity uh, for this kind of application. For example, if we stimulate the whisker of a rat and we look in a coronal section of the brain, we were able to see um, blood volume changes in the area uh, related to, to the whisker in, in the, this rat. So this was the first step, and uh, we wanted actually to increase a bit more the sensitivity of the technique, and this is what I'm going to talk about here with this special filter. Maybe just to, to explain the difference between uh, ultrafast Doppler and conventional Doppler. The main difference is that in uh, conventional Doppler, you will send a focused wave inside the medium, so you are going to build the image line by line. So you will need uh, more or less 100 emission reception uh, processes to build the image, the complete image. <laughs> Whereas in ultrafast ultrasound imaging, you just send a plane wave inside the medium, and you are going to record all the, the echoes coming back from the medium all at once, and you build the images after images. So the gain in, uh, in speed is uh, more or less a factor of uh, 100. This change uh, implies a lot of things for um, Doppler imaging, because in Doppler imaging, what you want to see is what's moving inside the medium. So if you focus along lines, you have to collect a few samples, and then to build an image, you have to move to another location to collect another few samples, and your process will be like this. So you have only a few samples per pixel. This is enough to detect large blood flow in uh, large vessels, but this is not really sensitive. In ultrafast imaging, you are going to build images after images, so virtually you could have an infinite number of samples in uh, every location. And this increase the signal-to-noise ratio, which is the same uh, vascular image in a, in a human neonate brain, but it also it implies uh, that you will have a huge, uh, an improved effi efficiency of filters, and also you have synchronous data. I said that Doppler imaging consists in detecting movie scatterers. So this is an ultrafast Doppler, an ultrafast data movie of a human brain in a, in a neonate, and you see that in some location you see the speaker moving. So this is what we are looking for. The, so we want to discriminate between the tissue and what's moving, the blood flow, and the classical way to do this, most people do, uh, is a high-pass filter. You suppose the tissue is centered on the zero frequency and the blood flow on the Doppler frequency, and your high-pass filter will cut, will cut in between. So there is a, a large amount of paper uh, about this subject, especially for the optimization of, of this kind of filter, uh, especially in the case of conventional uh, Doppler imaging, because you have only a few samples available, so it's really hard to optimize this kind of filter. But in uh, numerous cases, uh, the high-pass filtering is actually not enough, because uh, the tissue will, can also move, so it's not always centered on the, on the zero frequency. And in some application, uh, especially in uh, functional imaging, you want to detect the slow blood flow, because this is uh, where the neurovascular coping occurs. So in most cases, we have over, uh, overlapping spectrum, and the high-pass filter cannot discriminate between the two. However, if we do on the same movie I showed you a uh, high-pass filter, this is what you get. So you see that we have kept only what's moving in the image. But what's really interesting is the flashing artifacts you see on the, on the right, here and here, and you see that when the tissue moves, it uh, generates something specially uh, with a special extension, a large uh, special extension. This is logical because if the tissue moves, the tissue next to it uh, in one location, the tissue next to it will follow it. So as the tissue is cohesive, you will have a co specially coherent signal for the tissue, whereas the blood flow uh, is, is not. So just to illustrate this, 
if we have a closer look in a nine neighborhood pixel, uh, nine pixel neighborhood, sorry, of uh, an ultrasound data acquisition, so a stack of images, and we look inside the, those nine pixels, we normalize the signals, and you see that uh, they are very similar uh, from each other in the, in the different pixels, especially in the low frequency parts, so the tissue part of the signal. Whereas in the high frequency parts, so the blood flow, uh, you don't have uh, the, 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 the signals are not so much similar. And we can quantify this, for example, by computing the covariance matrix of these two signals. So for the tissue, you see that the covariance matrix is almost full, whereas for the, um, uh, for the blood flow, you have almost a diagonal matrix, meaning that you don't have special coherence for the, for the blood flow. So what we want to do is to use this, this information to uh, efficiently discriminate between tissue, tissue and uh, blood flow. Uh, not only using the temporal information, but using both temporal and spatial information. So the first step to do this is to rearrange your data in a matrix whose one dimension is time and the other one is space. And you're going to do the singular value decomposition on this matrix, which is a product of three matrices. And on the left, you will have the left singular vectors, uh, which are of dimension space, I say. And on the right, you will have the temporal right singular vectors. And in the middle, you have the delta, which is diagonal, uh, rectangular diagonal matrix, whose coefficients are di directly linked to the, um, the energy of the covariance matrix that I showed you before. And they are sorting in a descending order. So to explain a bit more the, the, what is this uh, decomposition on space and time, you could rewrite the uh, matrix product as a weighted sum of functions and for example, for i equals 1, you will have a weighting factor that, uh, that weights actually uh, an image, which is the left angular vector, so the first u. And uh, this image really looks like the B-mod image because it is uh, the image that explains the, the best the variance of all the images of, the, of my stack of images. And this will be modulated by a temporal signal, which is a temporal signal that, that explains the best all the temporal signals in all the pixels. And then when you go to i equals 2, you will have another mode. And uh, this mode explains the, this couple of two singular vectors, explains the, the best, the variance of what's remaining in the signal once you have removed the first one, okay, and so on. And what is important is that as the spatial coherence of the tissue is important, you will concentrate the tissue signal on the first singular vector. And after, in the last singular vector, you have something with blood flow. So what we do to do the filtering itself is to try to properly estimate the tissue signal by summing the, the first singular vectors, and we remove that from the, from, the overall, from the overall signal. And this will give us only the signal of the flow with a really high sensitivity. We tried this filter in a different configuration uh, with different uh, ranges of uh, tissue speed and the uh, flow speed, and we quantified the contrastional ratio in uh, using different filters, so classical high-pass filter, a non-mixing approach uh, such as described in the dry room and the uh, lost cycle paper with a high-pass filter and RFVD filter. When we do this, we see that, so you have the CNR plotted against uh, tissue speed and including tissue speed for different flow speeds. And you see that as soon as the tissue, uh, tissue begin to move, in the case of the high pass filter, you lose completely the detection of the vessel because you will have to increase the cutoff frequency of the filter, so you are going to cut everything in the blood flow. If you use the done mixing approach, um, things tend to get better uh, only for moderate tissue speed, and as soon as the tissue go really fast, uh, you lose completely uh, your, your signal. And in the case of our SVD filter, we see that in all the tested configuration we have done, so from one to 10 millimeters per second in terms of tissue speed, uh, we can have a contrast noise ratio above two, so that means we see something. And we can even see something when the, the blood flow goes slower than the tissue speed, uh, which would be impossible with a spectral high pass filter. This has huge implication for functional imaging. Uh, if I 
take the, the rat again, and we look inside the brain with a ultra fast Doppler recording. Uh, we filter this with the SVD filter, and I can select, for example, uh, different bands, different ranges of, uh, of speed with a bandpass filter. I see that I can collect energy uh, for, for blood flow speed as low as one millimeter per second. That would not have been possible with a high pass filter because to get rid of the of the tissue, I would have to put the cut off uh, frequency of the filter at least at 60 or 70 hertz. So I would have lost everything uh, below below this. And this is really important because we want to detect the, the slow blood flow in the arterioles and venules uh, where the neurovascular coping occur. This is also uh, interesting for clinical application. So this is on a human neonate brain. You see that, uh, so here the baby is really still, so it's, uh, it's, it's full. we don't have uh, too much motion. We see that we are able to detect more vessels and, and, uh, and smaller vessels. But the, that, that change becomes really dramatic when the when motion artifact occurs. In that case, the baby moves during the acquisition. And we see that we have to increase really high the, the set of frequency of the beta was filter to get rid of the tissue so we don't see anything. Whereas with the SVD, SVD filter, we still have all the small vessels in the, in the brain. So I would conclude by saying that a combination of ultrafast Doppler and special temporal SVD filtering offer unprecedented sensitivity, and this will be really important for functional application, both in small animal imaging and clinical imaging. But I would like us also to highlight that this is not at all uh, limited to brain application, and that this works for uh, a lot of organs, and we've tried for kidney, liver, and uh, even cardiac imaging. And this uh, works a lot for removing uh, motion art. I would like to thank the team and the, the medical imaging team in particular, and the IEEE committee for organizing uh, this uh, conference. And if you have any question, you can have a look in uh, this paper and uh, see also other application of this filter uh, here. And I can answer uh, your question also. Thank you.